Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak iOS 8.4 on any iDevice that can update to the firmware on Mac OS X. First of all, it's recommended that you watch this video on the desktop version of YouTube because there will be a few annotations down below at the bottom that will allow you to skip ahead when you click them through certain segments for jailbreak veterans. So if you're new to jailbreaking, I recommend watching this video in its entirety. Now, first up, I really do need to mention this. This jailbreak utility was released by PP. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the situation, PP essentially ported Taiji's jailbreak without their permission for iOS 8.4. So they stole their exploits and the vulnerabilities that inevitably led to the creation of a jailbreak utility prior to Taiji's own version of Taiji for iOS 8.4. And since then, PP has received so much criticism from not only Taiji, but also the jailbreak community. Whereas earlier this year, back in January, they actually ported Taiji, the first version of the utility for iOS 8.1.2 for Mac OS X. So it will be interesting to see what happens this time around because Taiji is rumored to be working on a Mac utility up until now they've developed exclusively for Windows. So I'm going to say this, I will have an annotation on the screen if and when Taiji releases their jailbreak utility because I definitely recommend using that over PP. Also, as soon as this video is live, there will be another annotation on the screen to my Windows tutorial for Taiji. I definitely recommend utilizing the Taiji jailbreak over PP just because it's more refined and it's actually their intellectual property. They know what they're doing and they've released so many stability updates since they initially published it. So if you're on a Mac and you can, I definitely recommend utilizing a virtual machine and Taiji in lieu of PP. So with that said, let's go ahead and get straight into the support devices. Like Taiji, this jailbreak does function on up to iOS 8.4 on every single device that can update to the firmware, being the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5C, iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, the original iPad mini, the second generation iPad mini, the iPad mini 3, the original iPad Air, the iPad Air 2, iPad 2, the third generation iPad, the fourth generation iPad, and last but not least, the fifth generation iPod Touch, which is what I'm going to be using to demonstrate with in today's tutorial. All right, let's get a few things out of the way. If you updated to the current firmware your device is running, likely 8.4 via the settings app, meaning you went inside of settings, general software update, and performed what's known as an OTA or over the air update, what you're going to have to do is restore to iOS 8.4 because you will most definitely encounter issues later post jailbreak. Though, if Apple has issued a firmware in the future that patches this jailbreak, something like iOS 8.4.1, for example, then definitely do not restore because you will be forced into that firmware. Instead, you'll just have to live with the complications that an OTA or over the air update causes. But if you're watching this video in 8.4 is the latest public firmware, just refer to the annotations on the screen now. Then just plug your device into your computer via a standard USB cable, launch iTunes, create a backup, restore your device to iOS 8.4, restore from your backup, and then proceed with the remainder of this video to jailbreak your device on iOS 8.4. I also recommend following that procedure if you encounter any sort of issues or complications during the jailbreak process. Now we need to do three quick things inside of the settings app. First and foremost, you need to navigate to passcode. If you have a Touch ID enabled device, it will say passcode and Touch ID, and you need to disable everything related to passcode lock. As you can see, I don't even have the option to turn it off because it's already disabled. I can just turn it on there. Next, you need to go to the iCloud portion of settings, so scroll down down a little bit and scroll down and disable find my device. For me, it says find my iPod touch because this is an iPod touch. So it will be dynamic based on your device, but just disable that portion of the iCloud settings. So to reiterate, stay signed in to your iCloud account, but just scroll down to the bottom and disable find my device right there. It's as simple as that. And then you need to go inside of settings general and then scroll down a little bit and right there for auto lock, we need to set it to never because you do not want your device device locking during the jailbreak process automatically. So for auto lock, set it to never, and then we'll be good to go. I'm also going to show you guys that this iPod touch is running iOS 8.4. As you can see, we have the completely revised music app icon there with Apple Music. 
and inside of settings general about down below at the bottom for the version this iPod touch does indeed confirm it is running iOS 8.4 so you know it's on the latest public firmware as of recording this video. All right so now we can start to really get into this jailbreak process now that we have the prerequisites out of the way. You're going to need one thing downloaded that's the latest version of the PP jailbreak being version 2. I will have one link down below in the more info to a post on my website that does contain PP. It's just easier to kind of consolidate everything there. It will also feature written instructions and once you have PP downloaded all you have to do is just mount the disk file and then from there once it's mounted you can just drag it to your applications. And I've already taken the liberty of just dragging PP from the applications folder inside of Finder to my desktop here so we can easily and conveniently run it. So what we're going to do now is just plug our device into our computer via a standard USB cable and then launch iTunes if it doesn't pop up automatically and ensure that it recognizes your device. If this is the first time you've connected to iTunes since you last restored and you receive a setup device section, you need to go through that process. I just did setup as a new iPod touch and we can get started from here. Again, ensure that your device is recognized inside of iTunes and then we can continue because you need to establish that initial connection on your device. Like I said, if you haven't connected since you last restored, you will likely receive a confirmation prompt asking you to verify the connection. And once you have, we can continue. So I'm just going to close out of iTunes now. And we can run PP by clicking it, but if you get an unidentified developer message, what you need to do is you need to allow the use of applications from unidentified developers. So launching the system preferences app, let's go ahead and zoom in here really quick. And inside of system preferences, we need to go to security and privacy. And down below there at the bottom, you need to allow apps downloaded from anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock it by entering my passcode and I'll be right back. All right, now that it's unlocked, we can allow the use of applications downloaded from anywhere and we can confirm that selection and now run PP by just clicking on it followed by open. And from there, we receive this prompt saying to close both Xcode if you have it downloaded and opened as well as iTunes and then we can click OK. So inside of my dock here I'm just going to confirm that iTunes is completely closed by right clicking and then clicking on quit and now we can click OK to the prompt inside of PP and try to launch it again and hopefully we won't receive that. So as you can see we now have the typical PP interface it's just default blue and it has recognized our device is on iOS 8.4 fifth generation iPod touch and just ensure that this install PP helper down below at the bottom is unchecked. It should be unchecked by default but if for whatever reason it is checked just uncheck it because it installs a third party Chinese software distribution platform. We're not interested in that we just want a jailbreak. So let's go ahead and click on jailbreak and it's just going over everything I said up until this point so we can click continue to that and it's saying it's going through the jailbreak process. So let's go ahead and refocus here on the iPod Touch and let PP do its thing and jailbreak the 5th gen iPod Touch on iOS 8.4. I'm also going to leave this part of the video up and I'm not going to cut anything out just so you guys can see approximately how long it may take. And if you get that restore in progress message, don't worry, that's completely fine. That's just typical of this jailbreak process. So again, let's just let PP jailbreak the iPod. And also I should mention this, try the jailbreak first and if for whatever reason it doesn't complete inner airplane mode the second time around when you try it, you may need to restore in between tries, but I recommend utilizing the airplane method if you encounter complications. And as you can see, we have a bar beneath the Apple logo. That's fine. It should just be injecting the jailbreak data.
All right, and here we are at the lock screen. Let's just go ahead and unlock it and let it sit. So refrain from interacting with it other than to just unlock it. All right, as you can see inside of PP, it says jailbreak succeeded. The iPod touch is rebooting now, and it should just take the normal amount of time it takes for your device to come back up. So let's just go ahead and wait for that to happen. And once it's at the lock screen, we're gonna go ahead and launch up Cydia. All right, so let's go ahead and slide to unlock now, and we're gonna go ahead and scroll over to the second page. All right, and zooming in, as you can see, we do have Cydia. So let's go ahead and launch it, and I'm going to unplug the iPod Touch, and it's going to go through the traditional preparing file system step. So let's go ahead and wait for that. It is so very important that you guys do not close out of Cydia at this point, and that you just let it prepare the file system, because if Cydia doesn't finish this step, it will force you into restoring your device, and you'll have to complete this process all over again. And once your device is finished, finished it will automatically respring so leave it alone and let Cydia do its thing. All right, as you can see, we have the Apple logo. It's just going through a respring, which doesn't take nearly as long as a reboot. It should be at the lock screen soon, and then we can relaunch Cydia. And I'll show you guys that Cydia confirms this is a fifth gen iPod running iOS 8.4. So let's go ahead and launch Cydia again for a second time. And now it'll load just how you normally expect it to. So let's go ahead and scroll down. All right, so down below at the bottom, Cydia states that this is an iPod 5.1 or a fifth gen on iOS 8. 
1.4 with Cydia 1.1.20. And we do actually have a couple of updates here being Cydia 1.1.23. So if you do have updates, which you definitely will, go ahead and tap on upgrade followed by confirm to install them right out of the box. So let's just go ahead and wait for this to complete and then it should give me a respring prompt. Cydia may crash, but if it does, that's completely fine. That's typical when updating Cydia these days. So let's just go ahead and wait for it to complete. This is just more proof that Cydia does indeed function on iOS 8.4 when jailbroken utilizing PP. So as you can see, Cydia did crash there. Let's go ahead and relaunch it though and navigate to the changes tab and I'll just show you guys that packages do load. So let's just go ahead and wait for Cydia. All right, and as you can see inside of the changes tab, we have so many different packages that we can install. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it helped you jailbreak your device on iOS 8.4 using a Mac. If it did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, guys. This is an absolutely amazing time to be a part of the jailbreak community. We receive so many new utilities and updates as of late. Remember, I definitely recommend Taiji over PP though. So if you have the chance to utilize either a virtual machine or borrow a friend's Windows-based PC, definitely use Taiji instead. And I will also have an annotation if and when Taiji updates their tool for Mac OS X. Keep that in mind. And if you're interested in winning a brand new iPad Air 2, just be sure to navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, sign up, start downloading apps. It's really as simple as that. And once you do, again, come back here and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think about jailbreaking as well as the feud between Taiji and PP. If you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and jailbreak tutorials similar to this one, just be sure to click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.